a few minutes. I know how to obtain an interlibrary loan. Anyone check that? No? Okay. Interlibrary loan is a process. It is a process whereby you are looking for a book, a journal article, which we do not have. The librarian will then send out a query, a search, right, to other libraries, whether within the state, regionally, nationally, or even internationally. The book or journal article will be sent to us. We would notify you. You, in turn, would come to us to pick it up. If it's a book, you return it to us, and we return it to them. Okay? I am familiar with the use of microfilm and microfiche. Anyone check this one? Yeah. Okay. Who, who checked? Let's see your hand. Give us, a, give us some information about the use of micromedia, which is both, which is a term used for both the microfilm and microfiche. Why do we use it? Yeah. Okay, from a couple of years back. So back issues of periodicals sometimes are housed on what we call the micromedia. Why would we put, want to put it on microfilm or microfiche? Yes, ma'am. Space, space. It saves space. What about you, sir? You have another answer for that? Because there are really three reasons why we use it. If you have, like, newspapers, they, 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 they deteriorate. Yeah, they deteriorate. They disintegrate. So it's a way of preserving print information. There's a third reason. Save space to preserve, and it's easier to store. Okay? Other places than libraries use the micromedia. How many of you got a charge card, A and S? You've been up there on that eighth floor, right? <laughs> okay. And on that eighth floor, you've made inquiries about your account. And sure enough, what do they use? They use the microfilm and the microfiche, where they have stored your credit record for the store so that they can check it. How many of you have ever been, have had need to go to the hospital and get a copy of your hospital record? Okay? They store. It makes it easier to store, right? Keep for a long time. Patient information on microfilm and microfiche. Government agencies use it, all right? The microfilm is a real a film. Right? Each frame can be magnified. Remember, micro means a reduction in size. So we have a reduction of the print material. This is a microfiche card from one of our special selections. There are approximately 100 newspaper articles on this one card from the uh, News Bank Collection on Urban Affairs. Most of our special collections here at Mega Evers College Library <coughs> that are microfilm or microfiche either can be located through the card catalog or they have their own directories and indexes. All right? Uh, Let's see. Any other questions on number eight? Number seven, I know whether or not my library circulates media material. Okay? Anyone ever had to go to our media services department? Did, were you able to borrow? No, I wasn't able to borrow. But what were you able to do? Okay, most of the materials.
materials in our media services department you have to use here. Though there are some that you may borrow. Okay, the ones that may be borrowed, the media staff will let you know what you have to do. Okay? The equipment as well is available there. In our media services department, second floor. Is there a question? Yeah, I It depends on uh, what it is and what kind of equipment we would have to make the cost. Yes. Any other questions? In our media department, we have audio-visual material. Now you're going to say, isn't the microform audio-visual? In a way, yes it is. But keep in mind, the things that you have that are audiovisual in the media services department are commercially produced sources of information. Okay, that's the original format that they came in most of the time. Whereas your microfilm is a way of preserving the print and it's a copy of the print, if you will. I am aware of most of the services my college library offers. Are you? Okay, well, hopefully you've been learning about some of these services right today. Keep in mind that in order to borrow from our collection, you need a library card for here. You can fill out the application form for the library card at the circulation desk until uh, you receive this library card at your home. You may use your validated ID card or Burstar's receipt to show proof you're a student here. <clears throat> when trying to locate materials, I know how to use the indices and abstracts. We will go into that further. These are categories of reference materials. So we will be discussing those later. I am familiar with the Dewey Decimal Classification System. Who is, everyone should really be familiar with it. That's the one that is, your school library uses. Okay, one minute. Let me put it up here. I'm not going to give you the classification system. All right, ladies. All right. I am not going to give you the classification system. Most libraries that use a classification system will have it posted, okay, in the library. What you need to understand is that it has ten major classes, and that to each class is a major class symbol uh, given of a hundred number. Okay, so if you want things about different countries, you look at 900, because that's history, travel, and biography. If you want music, uh, or art, that's in 700, etc. Okay? Uh, this is a closed system. We cannot go beyond those 10 classes. New ones cannot be created. And it was developed by one person. I don't expect for you to remember who Mel Herman Melville Dewey was. Or Herman Dewey, uh, Melville Dewey, rather. Ooh, I'm thinking of the author, Herman. <laughs> OK. But uh, Mr. Dewey uh, was our first, um, was a librarian at the Library of Congress. And he was also, I think, the first president of the American Library Association. He developed this classification system in the late 19th century. When a library uses the Dewey Decimal Classification System, what happens is that you will first go and look for the hundred number numerically on the shelf. Okay? But here at Mega Everest College Library and most other college libraries, we use the Library of Congress classification system. I'm going to give you that because
because you do have other colleges you can use besides our own. Please keep this inside your notebook. Again, most libraries that use this classification system will have it posted. You're not expected to memorize it. I will say, though, that uh, as you use it, you will become more familiar with it. And there is an exercise on the back that you can do, okay, on your own. We're kind of short on time, so uh, we're not going to do the exercise itself. If anyone has a question, I'll be happy to answer it. Notice the difference here. Instead of hundred numbers assigned as symbols, what do you have? Yeah. Letters from the alphabet. So now, if you go to a library that uses the Library of Congress classification system, you know you have to look first alphabetically on the shelves for the class letter. Now, this is not alphabetically, the, uh, let's put it this way. The symbol given is not the letter standing for the subject itself. So H's is not history. Okay? What you have here is a hierarchical order that shows relationships between the classes and a holistic approach to what? Classifying knowledge or categorizing knowledge. So that you first start off with general works, then you go to the internal man, if you will, his religion, his philosophy, his psychology, which is in BS, or his psychological makeup. Then man's history. Uh, with not just one class, but several classes. C through parts of G. Hold your hand up if you still need information. <clears throat> then man in his uh, group setting. Okay, the social sciences, the economics and uh, sociology, uh, his political science, his law, his education. Then man as a creative being, music. Did you get one? Okay. Music, fine arts, language and literature. Okay. And then Q, natural environment man's natural environment, then the technology, including medicine, uh, agriculture, the military sciences, culminating with bibliography and library science. Library science is that discipline that studies and implements the theories, if you will, of gathering knowledge, organizing that knowledge, and disseminating knowledge for your use. Now, what is a bibliography? I don't like doing straight lectures. Okay, so it's, a list of, it's a list of books used for whatever research that you've uh, done, whatever paper or whatever that you've Okay, good. It's a list of sources. Now, it comes from a Greek word, meaning book list, okay, or two Greek words, meaning book list. But we know that information comes in other than just books. So we now say sources of information to include the audiovisual materials that are available, the electronic information that is available, the oral information that is available, like through interviews, things of that nature, and all the other print and non-print materials, okay, that are available. Uh, they always will be on a particular subject. And they get, uh, need not just be at the end of articles, at the end of your term paper, okay? They can be books themselves. We have books in our collections that are considered bibliography. Uh, here are two books that I, uh, would be very useful to some of you in developing a multicultural, if 
You should also notice that uh, there may be special indices, if you will. Uh, some of them will even have a special section on audiovisual materials that you can use. Building bridges of understanding between cultures. Again, a listing of children's books for all grade levels from preschool, I think, through junior high and parts of high school. It gives you the age level for the books. It gives you, it's an annotated bibliography, letting you know with not only the descriptive content, but making recommendations as to how to use the source or how to use the book, okay, that's listed here. This is, uh, how shall I put it, a little dated because this comes from 1971. And, but many of the books in this list are now classics in the children and young adult field. They, uh, and you can use other sources, uh, like from the American Library Association, New York Public Libraries, children's and young adults uh, book lists, uh, other media sources, etc., to update this. Uh, this would be good if you want to start setting up a file of sources that you can use to help you develop lesson plans. And I would suggest that you do this. Make it a two-part file. One file for your own enrichment. And a second file that will consist of books and pamphlets and audiovisual materials that you can use with the children themselves or recommend to uh, your pupils, okay? And annotate it. Give notations about what you can do with these sources <coughs> or what you want to pull from these sources. You know what I'm talking Okay? So that this can start you off in developing your own file, your own personal bibliography of sources. <laughs> okay, any questions? We understand now what bibliographies are, I hope. And next thing is to go into, uh, normally I would go into the card catalog. But we're going to take a little uh, side trip, if you will, into other references. Because there's something I want to hook up with the card catalog and with using periodical indexes because they have something common uh, when you do a search for information, okay? Uh, that uh, may not be common to some of these other sources. And that is a subject approach, okay? And looking for the information. So right now I'm going to give you a fact sheet <coughs> on reference books that will define reference books for you. And also you have a little exercise there. This is something you can use also in your own classroom experience. Okay? Listed here are at least five categories of reference books that you should already know about and know how to use. Dictionaries, encyclopedias, Atlases, almanacs, handbooks, one, two, three, four, five, six, indexes, <laughs> okay? And the last one is called vertical files. This, this is pamphlet information. In our library, the vertical file contains things like government documents and clippings, and it's arranged by subject. Most of the time, the information in the vertical file has to be, uh, uh, may not be circulated, okay? You have to use it on site. Other items in the vertical file you may borrow. But you need to also understand that there are two classes of reference books. Subject class and uh, general. Most of you are aware of the general class covers a variety of topics, et cetera, disciplines. Uh, you know general encyclopedias like World Book, Compton, Encyclopedia Britannica. 
but there are also specialized encyclopedias, like the Encyclopedia of Education, or the McGraw-Hill Encyclopedia of World Biography. When you use multi-volume encyclopedias, you should become familiar in using the index volume. I'm going to give you the index volume, and I want you to look on the multi-culturalist. Uh-uh, you! <laughs> okay? <laughs> Why should I give her that index volume? Why can't she just go to the volume that has M in it? The exact page, volume number. Right. She'll have the exact volume number and page to go to, and she'll find out how to tell you that there isn't an entire article written on multiculturalism in there. Okay? So that it's going to be in other articles, subsumed under other articles. So it tells where, what volume number, page number. It can be subsumed under. Uh, what's another way we can approach multiculturalism? What else could we call it? Oh, it's been called so many things. Diversity. New term now. <laughs> Diversity. What else? Huh? No. <laughs> Sorry. Good try. Let's see if we can find a word. Okay, to describe it. Besides multiculturalism. Diversity. Interdisciplinary, maybe. What up? Though I doubt it, because interdisciplinary means multi all multidisciplinary. Doesn't matter which. They tend to mean that the discipline. Come on. Yeah, ethnicity. Ethnicity is another way of approaching multiculturalism. Okay. So, yes, I know what's in there. I'm going to tell them. But, uh, yeah, you will find multiculturalism there. But what you do find is not a main article. Okay, it's part of another article. All right? I think it's volume one. What page? <laughs> multiculturalism, if they're looking at art, for art education or music education, volume one, page 303. So now she can turn to this, okay? I like inside the, the McGraw Hill Encyclopedia of World Biography uh, because of the index it has. Sometimes you want to expose your pupils to people from different periods, different countries, okay, from different professions. So you can look by profession, let's say, writers, and the index. And you'll have a listing of writers that are had in this encyclopedia, and it's, they are divided by century and country, okay? Uh, you could also look for them by their racial or ethnic group. Uh, I'm going to pass the index volume around for this one so you can have a look at it. Another special encyclopedia that we have received is the World Education Encyclopedia. So it's more to me like a, a handbook on education in different countries. It's arranged alphabetically by the names of the different country, countries with uh, historical background information, the kinds of uh, constitutional and legal foundations they have, and their educational system an overview and a more specific uh, constitution.
concentration of the different types of education, like elementary education, uh, higher education, etc. Uh, and an evaluation of the educational system, the administration financing, and educational research that's being done, what's being expended on education in these countries, and information about the teaching profession as well as a glossary of terms, educational terms, used in these countries. to concentrate on some special handbooks that we have here. Uh, when one thinks of multiculturalism, uh, one forgets also of a forgotten group of people sometimes known as women. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about uh, the feminist movement, but I'm talking about major contributions that women have made, and if you are dealing with specific groups like African-American women, uh, this would be a very good handbook to use. Looking at the table of contents, you see that they are broken up into different categories, and it is from the colonial period to modern times. There is also a chapter on women organizations for black women, okay, that can be very useful. When it comes down to organizations, you know you can always write them. What do they do? They sometimes have a speaker's bureau that they can send someone out to talk to your class. They sometimes have pamphlet information that you can write to them for, okay? So that not only it builds up your library, but you have further information to share with your people, etc. Let's dump this one over here. Uh, this one is new to the collection. It's on the North American people of the peoples of the world. Actually, it concentrates on those cultures, both old and new, that have settled here within the United States. Okay, uh, you have everyone from, of course, African Americans, the Aleut Indian, uh, the Western Apache the Vietnamese, the Seminole Indians from Florida, uh, the Mormons in the Utah area, uh, Jewish Americans, uh, Asian Americans, etc. And for each cultural grouping, if you will, they, they talk about the culture's migration within the United States how they came to the United States, et cetera. Uh, since it's new, I haven't had a chance to see if there is a bibliography. They also talk about the folklore and literature, make suggestions, and yes, there is a bibliography at the end of each chapter that can be very useful to you. There you go. <laughs> for Afro-American studies. It's a curriculum orientation 
Christian, as well as an annotated bibliography. Annotation, remember, we, I mentioned that before, uh, a description of the source, etc. This is a multimedia guide for Latino materials for children and young adults. Again, it's annotated. When you use the bibliographies that are books, remember, look in the front for the arrangement. When it says multimedia, you're going to have not just books, but also audio visual, recommended audio visual materials to use. Uh, these are information sources, directories on Hispanics and Asian Americans. There are a few others. Uh, like library collections, research centers for them, the embassies and consulates. Uh, again, embassies and consulates will also send speakers out. They also have films other audiovisual materials that you can use, uh, posters that you can decorate the classroom with, okay? As well as a listing of businesses, etc., that are located within the United States.
as far as working with his class. So we sat down together and decided that for his language arts component, all he knew is that he wanted to uh, do something uh, in the area of writing. Okay, concentrate on that. I said, fine. At this age level, they were mostly fourth, fifth graders. I said, what you need, that, that is an area where they start with folk literature, primarily fairy tales. So let's work with a fairy tale. The class was to uh, discuss what kind of fairy, what were fairy tales they were to go into deciding on what fairy tale they were going to uh, do for a class project. They had to decide what they were going to do with this fairy tale. Uh, they were also going to make a social studies component out of it because if the fairy tale came from a foreign country, they were, to, they were going to learn about this foreign country. Okay? Uh, they chose Cinderella. They rewrote the play. I mean, it made it into a play and uh, rewrote it to update it for modern day language. The gym teacher taught them the minuet. They taught the gym teacher the latest dance. Okay. The art teacher helped with the scenery. Okay. So that you dealt with what? Scenes from, uh, what was it? That was the 18th century, I think, France. And helped with the costumes. Who does that mean? <laughs> the speech teacher helped with the diction that they needed for the play. The reading teacher helped those slow readers learn their part. Okay. <laughs> the librarian <laughs> did an overall presentation about uh, folk literature and fairy tales and helped them to decide on which folk tale to do. All right. Uh, they had rehearsals and everything. Uh, they did research. They came to the library during the research period looking for the costumes, looking for information about 18th century France. Okay? Uh, they did it in small groups or individually. They read other books about France, both fiction and nonfiction. Okay? They really became immersed in it. And uh, when the play was ready, a group came. They invited uh, two, yeah, we had enough room in the library, for two other classes. They performed it in the library. The principal was invited. She was so impressed that it became an assembly for the entire school. Okay? Every resource was used. It was a true integrative approach to you to taking a look at multicultural because then they learned about someone else's history, another uh, ethnic group, another country, if you will. Okay? Uh, so all of this is to say uh, it is a positive, truly positive teaching approach. Okay? Uh, it's also an approach to where students can learn about their own culture and build up a self-esteem and a self-identity. Okay, and I don't want you to forget that. So that's, I guess, the important thing. Okay, because we learn more about ourselves, we're more confident about ourselves, then we can reach out to what? Learn and uh, learn about others. Okay, or you become more willing to learn about others as well. Okay, now, in searching for all this information, and you may have to develop a unit or a lesson plan around this, or help develop a curriculum around this. Uh, multiculturalism. You will be using the card catalog, which is the index to the library book collection, as well as in our library to our audiovisual collection, to find out what sources are available, okay? find out what people are talking about as far as the research being conducted. And then you need to find out what is the <coughs> latest research being done in this field. And therefore you need to find journal articles 
by using what we call the periodical indexes. But before you can go into that, you need a search strategy. Part of your search strategy is not only knowing what you need to search for, but deciding on what terms to use in the search. So if generally we're looking for things like multiculturalism, we already decided that multiculturalism could be what? A search term. We also know that ethnicity could be a search term. What could be another one? What else did we say? Diversity. Is another search term. What else could I use? Specific names of racial groups. What you talking? Pluralism? Okay, I'll put that down in a minute. But let's put down racial groups. And then I, I'll put in parenthesis names. Because you can't just look under racial groups. You have to look under like Afro-American, Asian Americans, right? Native Americans or Indian. <coughs> he said pluralism. Gender. Or women studies. There's also something called male studies now. Like, oh, it's James. 
Banks, I think his name is. James Banks, who is a scholar in uh, elementary education or in education in general, dealing with pluralism and diversity. Uh, you have uh, Gloria Hall represented here, etc. Okay? This you may have. The second part of the bibliography is divided according to the major ethnic groups that the New York State Education Department has defined, and it also includes a section on women. These are children, both mostly children and some young adult literature. Okay?
then turn to professions where you have additional sources. Okay? Key word on the computer takes the place of cross-references in this sense because you can go into the computer and let's say ask for uh, Indian culture. Okay? Or Indian culture. Yeah, Indian culture. And the computer will search through the titles and subjects to come up with that term or terms. And then we'll pull it up for you if they find it. Okay? Even though the actual subject could be Native American with a subdivision, uh, customs and, well, description and travel, let's say. Description and travel tend to be a standard subdivision that's used in the, uh, when you look at the subject heading. Okay, do you understand that? So, let's take a look again at the terms. Remember, you're going to be divided in groups. I'm going to divide you in groups. You will select one of these terms. You will use the term to find a book through the card catalog. I don't care whether you go manually or on the card. I mean, uh, auto automated, online. You will also use the same subject to find a journal article. Now, for you in the education field, the specialized or subject indexes that you will use are the following. Education index and C-I-J-E. C-I-J-E is an acronym or abbreviation meaning current index to journals in education. It is also an abstract. Current index to journals in education. It is part of the ERIC system. The true ERIC system also has documents, etc. There are microfilm, you can do a computer automated search. Okay, this is a byproduct for journal articles, for searching for journal articles, and CIJE is the manual or hands-on or the print byproduct. Okay? So I'm going to pair you off. Each group will do the following. Uh, excuse me. Each group will do the following. They will use either the cards or the online card catalog to locate a book using one of these terms. Okay? Then we'll proceed to the periodical room where you will use the same term to find a journal article. I would also refer you to use Education Index, but I want us all to become more versatile in our search, and I want us all to use CIJE, Current Index to Journals in Education. And you will go through the process of finding a journal article. I have worksheets for you for the journal article. Okay? Any questions again? Now to divide up into the groups. Each group is going to do one, one book, one journal article. Okay? <laughs> and you'll be in groups of three, because this is a large class. Yes? We already have groups. I wonder if it would be easier. Okay. How many are in the group? Three or four. Okay, that's fine. If you want to stay with your own group, then you can do it within your own group. To make life a lot easier.